Okay, welcome back to Florida Naturally. We have Bill Whalen here, and uh, Bill, tell us where we are. Well, this is uh, the Crystal River Preserve State Park. Uh, it's uh, one of the uh, Florida state parks. Uh, what goes on here is there's a there's a branch of the uh, Florida Public Archaeology Network, FPAN, here, and uh, the archaeologists here are interested in uh, the marine archaeology of the West Coast. Uh, specifically the uh, the ships that uh, were involved in the blockade. The archaeology folks were very interested to see what was used mm -hmm. to move the goods from the blockade runners into shore and from shore in to the blockade runners. And uh, so they uh, helped us form our chapter of the uh, Traditional Small Craft Association. And our main goal, our immediate goal, was to figure out what kind of a small craft was used around that time. And we did a lot of literature searching and everything and uh, found a boat which was uh, measured in the 1950s. It was an old boat that was found in the 1950s. It was measured by Howard Chappelle. And Ch Chappelle determined at the time that the boat was 75 years old. 1950, 75 years earlier, puts it right at, right at the time of the boats that we're looking at. The, the fishing industry along the coast here would have used a boat very similar to this. So we took that boat, we took the lines from that boat, uh, and lofted the lines, built the forms, put the planks on it, and this is the result. It's called a Chesapeake Bay Sharpie. If somebody wants to uh, get involved with your group, how do they do that? Well, uh, you know, they didn't have it this back in, in, the, in the Civil War times either, but we've got a website. It's uh, tsca.net slash crbb for Crystal River Boat Builders. And uh, that's got, the website has the full documented pictures of uh, the building of the boat. Uh, we've got a bibliography on some of the old sailing and cruising that was done in Florida back in the 1800s. It's a pretty neat website. We're pulling together a lot of interesting stuff about the history of small boat building in Florida. Okay. Thanks for talking with us, Bill. Well, thanks you for coming over. Uh, stick around. We'll give you a ride in the boat. This is a replica of a 18, late 1800s era Rushton canoe, sailing canoe. It's, it's as much of a sailboat as it is a double paddle canoe. In the late 1800s, there was big cruising clubs uh, in this kind of canoe, and they would take long cruises down the Mississippi, uh, all the way around Florida. And it's been uh, some very long, very interesting. There's, there's several books available on the Internet also. They saw things differently, but that's an interesting part of that is part of what we're doing here with Crystal River Boat Builders is tying in that kind of heritage, and it gives us a little perspective on our modern life. My name's Pete Redston. And Pete, where are you from? Well, I'm... From Inverness now, down from Connecticut. And this is your boat? This is my boat that I've been making for the past year. What is it called? It, it's called a Swifty 14, and actually it started as a kit from Shell Boats, who's up in uh, uh, St. Albans, Vermont. But it all came in a large box, and uh, I've been putting it together. What's it made out of? Well, it's made out of plywood. There's three different pieces of plywood down the side here across the bottom and then it's epoxy glued together and uh, all the pieces are all uh, bonded together with filler and uh, the seats and centerboard and it's all just uh, the modern boat similar to the uh, boat that we built here. And how long does it take to build one of these? Well it takes about 40 hours to uh, actually physically assemble a boat but I've probably got another 40 or 50 hours in tweaking and finishing and varnishing and the epoxy and all the other parts of it that go together. Yeah, I have fortunately uh, built a 16-foot-6 uh, six kayak uh, and also a 16-foot lapstrake canoe. The lapstrake canoe is made out of sapili plywood and the kayak is made out of uh, quarter-inch cedar. That one is a strip built which is quarter-inch strips glued together and then covered inside and out with a fiberglass cloth. This is, has always been for me a relaxation. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I work 15 minutes, I work 15 minutes. Or if I work all day, I work all day. I just don't count the time. I have built a boat, 11 and a half foot boat in 10 days. But these generally take six months at least. Well, they're, they're a pleasure to build. I fortunately had a source of castaway wood uh, in small pieces, so, and I like wood, I like the colors, so I tried to fit them together to where they would show. 
and, and make the, the finished product look good. And uh, with mahogany and cherry and uh, just regular pine as, as, and fir and that kind of thing. So. All right. Well, good deal. Thanks for talking with us. Well, thank you. Right. I appreciate it. What's your names and where are you from? It's Alan and Judy Boys, and we're from Barters Island, Maine. And where is Barters Island? <laughs> Booth Bay. Wow, pretty on the, area. On the coast. Beautiful. Uh -huh. It's very, very pretty beer. And uh, you didn't sail all the way in that boat? Oh, <laughs> sure we did. <laughs> no, we didn't. No, we trailered it down. Uh -huh. And did you build a boat? No, I did not. And an uh, old sea captain up in Vermont retired, um, built 15 boats, and this is his last one, and they couldn't refuse it. Uh -huh. But we have built three boats in the past. It's a Swamp Scott dory, but it's much fatter than most dories, and so they call it a fat boat. And it was designed, redesigned on near Friendship, Maine. And they took some lines off some old boats, and then they came up with these lines, and the, he, he bought the plans and built this one. So you're down here in Crystal River enjoying the sunshine? Yeah. Yes, it's a lot of sunshine for Mainers, that's for sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm Bill Sloan, and my wife, Robbie, and I, we're from uh, Hernando Beach, Florida, just south of here. All right, and what do we have behind us here? What we have here is the uh, Marshall 18-foot catboat. It's the uh, model is called the Sandling, made in South Dartmouth, uh, Massachusetts. It's a 1988 cat rig boat. It's a replica of the 18th century uh, work boats on Buzzards Bay and Narragansett Bay and places on Long Island and New Jersey. And uh, the, the fleet in Florida is growing by the day. Down Pine Island Sound, we have many of these cat boats, smaller ones. But they're a very stable uh, platform and uh, sails like a dream. I'm uh, Dennis Bradley, and I'm from Pine Island in uh, Charlotte Harbor, north of uh, Fort Myers. Well, Egret is a, a famous Florida boat. It's a, kind of a cult boat. The uh, fellow that built it originally uh, had moved to Biscayne Bay very early, 1870s or so. Uh, long before the, the East Coast was developed. This one is uh, uh, called Egret, and it was a combination of a Sharpie and a Dory. For many years, it carried mail and light freight from Key West to Jupiter Inlet and back uh, many, many times, uh, went to the Bahamas. Uh, anyways, it was just a, a super boat for the shallow water that people find there. It's about 4,000 pounds. It has a copper bottom, so you don't have to paint it. Very light, uh, small sail area compared to modern boats, but uh, very easily pushed and uh, Yesterday we sailed up in, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 knots of wind. We were doing five and six. Well, glad to be here in Crystal River. I tell you what, it's, uh, we got more people. This is, the, this is the kind of boat that's easy on the environment, can go anywhere in the West Coast. Boating industry has kind of done a deal on people, you know, that need deep draft and offshore boats. This is the thing for this country. Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip That started from this tropic boy, a boy, this tiny ship Mate was a mighty sailor man, skipper brave and sure. Five passengers set sail that day for a three 